Hey everybody, this is Coach Noel with Coach Tony over at CrossFit Mountain Island. Uh, we have been tasked with coming up with our own vlog to kind of help spread some information for our members and people who are interested and just listening in general. Um, so the topic that Tony and I wanted to discuss today is what it's like to be a woman in the fitness industry. Um, Cody said that he couldn't speak to this very well because he's not a he's woman. Not a woman. <laughs> so he might do it on what it's like to be a male in the fitness industry, which would actually be kind of cool to hear that perspective as well. Yeah. Um, and I don't want this conversation to be like, uh, this is, woe is me, like, you know, like, these are all the things that I hate about being a woman in the fitness industry. Yeah. I actually love being a woman in the fitness industry, hence why I've made it my career. <laughs> um, <Yeah. laughs> so let's just start by, um, I'm going to give you guys a little bit of background about um, myself, and then we'll talk about Tony, and um, we'll just keep it short and brief, and hopefully you guys can relate to kind of what we've been through. And our ultimate goal is to make sure that as a woman, you feel comfortable yeah. in the community that you're in, uh, whatever gym you might walk into or whatever kind of fitness you're in interested in. Um, I just wanna make sure that, you know, there's no more body shaming, there's no more like feeling bad about yourself being a woman amongst all of these fit men, <laughs> okay? Uh, you can be a fit woman as well and be 100% just confident yeah. in who you are, okay? Um, so I've been in the fitness industry for 10 years now. Um, I started exercising when I was 18, so I wasn't athletic at all in the slightest. My entire life leading up until uh, just deciding one day that I was tired of being sedentary and having a fast heart rate and I wanted to fix myself um, health wise, uh, cause I know I was going down a really bad path and I was considered skinny fat. So <laughs> I was skinny, but I wasn't overweight. Yeah. Um, but internally, like everything was just not healthy. Yeah. Um, and I ate relatively healthy, but still like putting Lunchables, lots of <laughs> thick milk or whatever, yeah. like sandwiches every day. But, um, you know, we didn't know better back then. But from 18 to now 28, I have seen a lot and been through a lot and have been able to form a perspective that I want to share with other women. And so I'm gonna have Tony kind of tell us about what your history is. Yeah, mine's a little bit different than yours. I have always been athletic growing up, so um, I danced competitively for about five or six years in like middle school and then I ran track, played volleyball, um, played soccer in high school. So it was like a few years here and there I dabbled in things but I never really um, made it my lifestyle or really decided that I wanted to commit so much time to those things. And so um, when I got to college, I was, oh, <laughs> my diet was horrible. Um, and it, you know, was throughout growing up and I just felt myself gaining like the freshman 15 that everyone talks about. Um, but luckily I had some friends and they worked out in their garage. And so they taught me how to lift and I loved the community aspect of like, all right, you know, every Sunday night we're gonna go to the, the garage gym. We're gonna lift some weight. We're gonna work out together. And, um, I didn't know what I was doing at first, but through that, I really enjoyed feeling strong um, and empowered and being able to lift weight, um, even if it wasn't a lot at first, uh, but it made me want more, uh, it made me want to lift heavier. And so through that, after a few years of just like lifting and, and dabbling in that, I decided that I wanted to get into CrossFit and I had a really good friend um, who in his garage just taught me everything that I knew, all the basics of the lifts. and. Uh, from there, I joined a gym and I have been doing CrossFit for about two years consistently, about three years total. Yeah, awesome. So let's start off by pretty much just discussing what it's like to be a woman 
in the fitness industry. So let's go back to the beginning. What it was like to walk into a Globo gym, because that's where we all start. <laughs> Literally all of us start there, unless you're a, l a lucky one. Yeah. <laughs> and you go to where you're already immediately respected, which we'll get to that. Um, but walk into a Globo gym wearing yoga pants and a tank top and maybe even like a sweater around your butt yeah. or something. Because, you know... Going into a gym, you're already being sexualized the second you walk in or gawked at or looked at, yep. right? Yeah. So um, what are some of the things that go through your mind as a woman when you walk into a gym? Yeah, I know we chatted about it a little earlier. I went to the University of Central Florida and we had a huge um, like recreational center and the bottom floor had all the weights, all the squat racks. Um, the ben like the bench racks, the dumbbells with the benches that you can, you know, do your reps on and immediately, you know, the first thing you think of is like eyes down, like don't make eye contact eyes with any down. of the guys. Like they're gonna look at me funny and I they're gonna be mad that I'm taking up their space or that I'm on a squat rack or that uh, I have their dumbbells in my hands or what are they gonna think about my next rep or am I gonna make the next rep? And so you just kinda eyes down, stay quiet, just try to do what you need to do and leave as quick as possible. And that's with a little bit of confidence going in. Like you already have the nerve to walk into the yeah. weight section. Yeah. <laughs> that's, yeah. Most women don't even have the nerve yeah. to step foot on that weight floor, Yeah. right? Because the second you do, you're gonna see some eyeballs in the mirror. Yep. <laughs> this is what's gonna happen if you sit down at a bench. The whole time. <laughs> Looking you up and down. Yep. Right? So as a woman, it's like, eyes down, don't make eye contact, just do your reps. Yep. Literally, like, headphones, hat sometimes, uh -huh. do not speak to me kind of vibe. Yep. Right? But what happens the second you look up? Can I have your number? <laughs> What's your Instagram? It's instantly, oh my gosh. God, that really ages me because that wasn't even a thing when I was <laughs> working out. The but no, so like the second you look up, it's instantly like, you single? Can I have your number? What? Or what are you training for? Mm -hmm. I've gotten that one so many times. What are you training yeah. for? Life. What do you want to look like? Life. Yeah. Well, yeah. What are you trying to look like? Yeah. That's another thing. So what are you trying to look like? So I don't know if it's because the media has portrayed how a woman is supposed to look, but if you think about it, all of the Victoria's Secret models are like stick skinny with some muscle definition. They look good in a bikini. Uh, I feel like that is the societal definition of what a real woman is supposed to look yeah. like. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so... When a guy asks, if you're if you're lifting weights, immediately they're like, what are you trying to look like? Yep. It's not like a, what are you trying to look like? It's like, why are you lifting weights? Yeah. Like, how big do you want to get? What are you doing in here? Yeah. Kind of thing. So it's like, what are you doing away so far from your treadmill? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, seriously. <laughs> and so you have to awkwardly answer, I'm just getting healthy or I'm not training for anything. Or you feel like you have to say like, oh, I'm training for a competition or something. Oh, a bodybuilding competition? Are you trying to train for the bikini level? Or are you trying to get like, big. are you trying to do like physique bodybuilding, like the big girls, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Like the bulky yeah, girls. Yeah. And so having to answer that question is like, not a question you should even have to answer. You don't owe them anything. Yeah. <laughs> but there is this weird pressure to have to answer that question. Mm -hmm. um, and then you start to wonder, well, what am I trying to look yep. like? Why am I doing this? Yep. Is it okay? Like, should I do this? It, should I be doing yep. this? Or am I doing something wrong? But we're just trying to get healthy. Yep. Having muscle helps burn fat, makes you live longer, fitter more functional for everyday life. So why is that not enough? Yeah. You know? And then I got asked that question so many times. What are you training for? 
that I eventually started to believe I needed to be training for something. Hmm. And I never thought of it that way. But yeah, I got in my mind that I needed to have that answer ready. Yeah. Because it was asked all the time. Yeah. And so I was like, well, I'm training for bodybuilding. And then I made myself believe that. Yeah. That it's like, all right, maybe I do need to do a competition if I'm going to be in the weight room doing anything. Yeah. So I started looking into that. And I was like, okay, well, what, do, what does it take to compete in bodybuilding? And this was maybe like two or three years into following a program by a fitness model on Instagram who competed in bodybuilding competitions. And I was like, oh, I want to look like how she looks. So I'm going to do the program that she puts out there. And so I bought her program for like $100. It was like a 12-week program. And I went through it like three times. And at the end of the 12-week cycle, I still didn't look like her. <laughs> Darn. <laughs> Darn. <laughs> and then I look back at those programs now, and it was literally like three hours worth of stuff every day that was all sitting on a machine. Mm -hmm. uh, it took forever. I look back at that now, and I'm like, as a coach who's a professional now, I wouldn't even give that to my mom yeah literally nobody should ever do any of those training programs because they have no certifications whatsoever this girl she's not a certified trainer yeah she has literally no professional background whatsoever she hired a trainer to get her in the shape that she's in mm. she herself though has absolutely no background yeah so there's that oh i want to look like this coach or this trainer or they call themselves that or this model so i'm gonna buy their program and it usually starts out with 21 day quick fix or <laughs> booty blaster <laughs> or uh what are some of them like bikini body ready bikini body ready or you know like something 15 day challenge get abs instantly lol <laughs> because we buy into that and we think that's the answer because yeah. their body is on the cover right and we're gonna buy whatever body we want to look like because why i feel like we have been molded yeah. into think that we need to look that way because as women that's how we should look we should look like sexual creatures that are stick thin look good in a bikini big boobs big butt uh so we don't want to lose the butt so we're not going to do squats but, you know, maybe do some of those like leg curl machine things because you don't want to lose the butt. Or if you don't have one, you need to do all the squats. Yeah. <laughs> but that's, I just quickly realized that if I was going to compete, I needed to eat an extremely low calorie diet get my body fat down to literally nothing to where it almost disrupts your hormone production and then follow a program that is nothing but focusing on the large muscle groups so you're not even focusing on your joints or the small the development of small muscles so the risk of injury is exponentially greater i was injured all the time because i just put heavy weight on the yeah. the weight machines the leg extensions the bicep curl literally the machine trying to get big bulky yeah. muscles one i wasn't eating enough food to build muscle and then i was working out too much so it was like overtraining. yeah it just was a nightmare literally had no idea what i was doing yeah. right because this is what i've been told is supposed to work right yeah then you get a guy that comes up to you and is like oh you must be training for a show this guy is like a coach for bodybuilding competitions and he trains all the girls in the area and I'm like yeah I think I, I want to do the figure one that's one above bikini so you're a little more muscular I was like I wanted to look muscular and he was like the only way you'll ever compete in or win a competition is if you take steroids oh. he said you cannot do it naturally you will not win the girls will literally kill you and I was like if that's what it takes to compete in that sport I want nothing to do with yeah. it literally nothing to do with it i was already uncomfortable with the fact that i had to walk on a stage in high heels in a bikini yeah. stick my butt out yep. flap my hair back yep. and then wiggle my butt at the judges i couldn't even imagine my grandma sitting out in the audience 
let alone doing that in front of strangers. Yeah. Now I have to take steroids. I'm out. I'm out. Peace. Now I've lost my identity. What am I training for? Mm. How do I answer that question? Mm. Wow. <laughs> then, you know, I heard about CrossFit. <laughs> Watch the games on TV. Oh, yeah. The documentaries. Oops. Watch those documentaries on Netflix. Sold. <laughs> and I see these girls yep. walking around yep. in athletic bikinis at the time, I thought. I didn't know what they were wearing. Like sports bra? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> and like the little booty shorts. Yeah, this, yeah, the shorts. And I'm like, okay. They're a little bulky. But I was like, but I was like rational. I was like, but they probably train like six to eight hours a day. They probably eat yeah. a whole lot of calories. At this point, I knew that that's what it took. Yep. And I was like, okay, well, like, they're fit. Beautiful. They can lift Beautiful. heavy. They run fast. I want to do that. <laughs> and what was the coolest thing was that the men were doing the same workout. Yep. And they were all walking around super confident. The men weren't looking them up and down, right? They weren't even trying to flaunt anything. Yeah. It was just like they were confident in what how they could perform. Yeah. Not how they looked. Yeah. And they were being judged based on their performance. Yeah. Not based on how they looked. And I was like, for the first time in my life, I was like, this is cool. Yeah. <laughs> This is cool, right? Yeah. And then I heard that there are workouts named after girls, the original CrossFit girls who yeah. are badasses, yeah. by the way, and they have workouts named after them. The only workouts I've heard with names after them are like hero workouts or men that have achieved big things. But to hear that they are workouts named after women, I was like, the sport keeps getting better and yeah. better. <laughs> this is so cool. And, um, but then again, yeah. I was like, but they're super intimidating. <laughs> I've been sitting on machines for the last few years. Yeah. And these girls are literally like doing handstand walks, uh, climbing doing ropes. like gymnastics things on rings yeah. and bars and climbing ropes and sprinting and pushing heavy sleds and squatting heavy weight. And I was like, I'll never be like them. <laughs> it's immediately what I thought. I'll never really? be like them because I wasn't athletic mm. growing up. I had no athletic experience whatsoever. Never actually hired a coach. It was literally all learning. Yeah. And I was just scared out of my mind mm. to start that. I don't know how people walk into a CrossFit gym and they're like, I'm going to get fit. Yeah. I'm like, you're braver than I ever was literally ever Yeah. to come in and not be fit and ask for help you're a better person than I am like I was scared yeah. out of my mind <laughs> it's hard to do it's hard to do the things that you're bad at absolutely <laughs> to this day it's still hard yeah so yeah I remember watching Sarah Sigmund's daughter on one of those documentaries and I was like I'm gonna be like that like in my head I was like and you said you're gonna be like that yeah that, that takes so much courage like she can do that I can do that. Wow. Yeah. So that's why I, that's actually why I started CrossFit. Cool. I was in my friend's house. Watching. We were watching a behind the scenes documentary of like the 2015 games. I saw Sarah Sigmund's daughter. She's my favorite. And I was like, she's funny. She yeah. She has a good personality. Super sweet. She's so freaking strong. Like, yeah. I'm going to be like that. Yeah. So. So, yeah, I mean, I met Cody who this was kind of my first introduction to CrossFit. I, I had a coach that I uh, worked with and trained with um, at the gym that I worked at previously, and she was on the team with Cody, and she had the body that I wanted. Mm -hmm. I was like, I wanna do what you're doing. Yeah. And she had like 10 years of CrossFit experience under her belt and had like beautiful yeah. thick thighs like gorgeous legs, uh, her back was shredded. And yeah. I was like, and she was small and petite, little, but a thick thing. And I was like, I wanna be like you, right? <laughs> Just tell me what to do. I'm gonna do whatever you tell me to do. And she was like, well, I do CrossFit. And I'm like, oh. you do that CrossFit thing? Can you ease me into it? <laughs> 
And then uh, then she introduces me to Cody and like I walk into their gym. Like I first time stepping into a CrossFit gym was watching a regionals team train. Mm. Wow. <laughs> you want to talk about extremely yeah. intimidating. There's three girls on the team, three guys on the team. The girls are jacked, yep. but like gorgeous yep. jacked. Like it doesn't look uh, masculine. It looks extremely yeah. feminine with incredible muscle definition. And they're over here lifting weights as similar to the men. Like, but they're in sports bras, short shorts. There's no air conditioning at all in this gym. Yep. And the guys are just wearing shorts and no shirts. And they're all drenched in sweat, killing themselves in these workouts. Beautiful bodies, literally all of them, amazing bodies. And I'm sitting in the corner and I'm like, I'm never gonna do that. <laughs> and the girls are like, Noel, why don't you come in, jump in with us, try to do this workout. And I'm like, what, what, are, what are you doing? And they're like, we're gonna do like thrusters and burpees and deadlifts. And I'm like, I don't know what those things <laughs> are. What's a thruster? I mean, I've heard of a burpee, but I've never done one before. And then I don't even know if my deadlifts are right. <laughs> I'm like, I think I'm gonna squat. Yeah. I'm gonna go squat in the oh corner. <laughs> Some people literally did that. <laughs> but they were so sweet. I, at the time I didn't know that you could modify. I didn't know there was a thing. Um, and they were training. I didn't want to interrupt them or bother them or anything. They were just trying to be inclusive, which is just what it is when you go into a CrossFit gym. They're just inclusive immediately. Yeah. Like everybody's super nice, um, super nice. And though I was intimidated, I felt welcomed. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, and then after that, I was like, let me, let me YouTube some more CrossFit videos. Let me just watch some more. And then I started finding videos on YouTube of not CrossFit games level athletes actually doing the workout. So like regular people. Yeah. And then I watched some of those videos and I was like, there are girls right next to the guys doing the same workout in little to no clothing and they're high-fiving each other at the end. I like where this is going. <laughs> and I was like, you know what? I, I told my friend, I was like, I want you to teach me. I want to learn. And then um, finally stepped into a CrossFit gym. First one, old people were running circles around me. Literally old, yep. <laughs> old men with six pack abs yep. running circles around me. And I'm this young whippersnapper and they're looking at me. Like, come on. They're not looking go. at me like, ooh, look at her. They're looking at me like, oh, so sweet, so weak. Yeah. <laughs> but they were super nice. They were like, come on, Noel, you got this. I'm like the last one to finish the yeah. workout. <laughs> and they're all just like, not even breathing heavy. Yep. And I just remember being like, one, if they can do it, I can do it. Yeah. If they're that age and that shredded, I'm some young kid, I definitely need to at least get to their level, at least, right? And then I see girls who are all different sizes, literally like all different sizes. And all of them, are wearing all variations of clothes. Some of them are completely covered and some of them just have on like a sports bra and pants or whatever, like, and that was the norm. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Not all the guys had their shirts off. Some of them had their shirts on. It yeah. was like a little bit everybody. Yeah. And at the end of the workout, everybody's laying on the floor, yeah. <laughs> soaked in sweat yeah. and high-fiving each other and cheering each other on and yelling out their scores so the coach can write it down on the board. And nobody is like shy to tell them their score. Yeah, yeah. And then I hear these words like, I did it RX coach. And at the time I was like, I don't know what that means, but cool. Sounds like it's an accomplishment. Yeah, good job. <laughs> but there were girls that 
if they walked into a regular Globo gym that were wearing this outfit, yep. would be looked at like they had three heads. Yeah. But not only that, but somebody might say something to them. Like, some of these girls were overweight and wearing just a sports bra and shorts. Yeah. And if you go to a regular Globo gym, I've actually heard men, like, literally speak amongst themselves and be like, I don't know what she thinks she's doing wearing right. that outfit. Or who does she think she is wearing something like that? Mm -hmm. I have yeah. never in my four years of doing CrossFit heard any man speak any words like that yeah. ever about a woman. Literally never. Yeah, because it's not, it's not even so much about like how you look or what you wear it's more about like what your body can do yep and whether that's rx or you know the way the workout's written or that's modifying a movement to make it more of where you're at skill wise or strength wise like it's it's not about like oh noelle's in a sports bra and shorts today and i can't believe she wore that or why are you wearing that when there's men in the class mm -hmm. or, or anything like that it's like no we're all in the class we're working hard. It's a hard workout. We're seeing what we can do. We're pushing our limits. Yep. We're doing it together. And then at the end, we get to celebrate and we get to high five each other and shout out our scores. And regardless of if you did it the way it was written or you yep. had to change some things because you're not there yet, or um, maybe you have an injury, like that's okay too. You know, at, at the end of the day, it's not necessarily about what you look like or what you're wearing. It's just about doing the work. Yep. And I think that's why CrossFit is so cool because it's just about getting the hard work done together and yeah. that's something that everyone wants to do and can be a part of and you don't have to look a certain way or be a certain way you just have to show up every day and so I think that's even as a woman like makes it even better to go to like knowing that you're not going to be judged if you yeah. can't lift heavy or do a certain movement like mm -hmm. you're just going to be judged in a sense of how hard you worked Absolutely. And your effort, you know, effort's really the only thing that matters. And if you put in effort every day, you're going to get better. So, yeah, it's like a win-win. <laughs> and Tony was just telling me before we started the video about an experience she had where there was this standard of um, wearing a shirt that covers her butt. Um, or if you go to the beach to leave, have your t-shirt on and shorts on and you can't be seen in a bikini. Um, do you want to talk about that at all? Yeah, I think for, uh, like, growing up and kind of and when I started getting into fitness, there was a, a negative stigma about women um, or about myself and, like, what I would wear when I would work out, you know? And it was never out of a place of, like, look at, look at me right, or, right. you know, here I am. It was just more of, like, it's 100 degrees outside of Florida yeah, yeah. right now, yeah. like, I am working really hard and I'm sweating and like I can't breathe <laughs> and I don't want you know these tight fitting or long lengthy cotton mm -hmm. big things yep. on me because I can't breathe you know um, or it's it's incredibly hot or humid or whatever and so that was a little bit I think my confidence for a while was just like stifled I think I was super conscious of mm -hmm. like what I was wearing or like how other people would take how I look or what I was wearing or what I looked like with what I was wearing. And that really hindered me from being able to worry about working hard. Like instead of wanting to put all of my effort into a workout, you know, I was putting more effort in like, well, what am I going to wear today? Is yeah. it going to be okay? Yeah. Like, am I going to, can I work out in it? Like, am I going to like overheat? Like things like that, yeah. where it's just like, my intention is not to like, Hey guys, look at me. Right. You know, my intention is just to work hard. And part of the sport of CrossFit, you know, is working hard. And in a sense, like volleyball players wear short shorts because yeah. they're easy to move in. Yeah. CrossFit athletes wear sports bras and shorts because it's easy to move in. You're doing you know? gymnastics. You're doing gymnastics. You're lifting heavy weights. You're running, you know, and, um, and so it took me a while to feel comfortable yeah. even like working, working out in something that wasn't like head to toe, like covering. And it wasn't because I was insecure about my body. I just was right. like, oh, I can't, 
I can't do this. Yep. Like it's immodest for me to, to do this. And to that modesty point, some gyms have a dress code. And I think it's more like, there's just so many uh, like stigmas, as she was saying, of like, what is modesty this day and age? At this point, you've got female singers up on stage with literally plastic covering up their <laughs> private parts. Yeah. What's, what is the standard? Yeah. Right? If we can idolize people like that on stage wearing little to nothing, then, you know, if, if you're going to hold women to a certain standard of keeping yourself clothed out of respect or modesty, then don't put literally everywhere in front of us naked models. Yeah. If that's the standard that you're trying to set. It just doesn't work. Yeah. You're being a hypocrite. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And... Um, I feel like that's where the issues come into play with being sexualized versus being respected. Yeah. And so you, you're seeing one thing, you're hearing another, but you might be experiencing both like interlaced. Like what are we even supposed to believe? Yeah. And we, we had talked about like when you go to the beach and if you're told that you need to cover up right? That's only going to continue to heighten a sense of insecurity about your body, right? So if we're asked to stay modest or stay respectable, if we do anything that strays away from that, I feel bad about myself. Yeah. Or I don't feel comfortable in my skin or my body is somehow not attractive or I'm being deviant. Yeah. or something and yeah. taking my clothes off but men can walk around in trunks and no t-shirt literally you can see their nipples and it's like totally acceptable yeah like what yeah and the end goal is not to here i am you know but it's just right. to be comp like confident and absolutely you can be confident in working out in a gym in a sports bra and shorts not be sexualized and then also just be good with what you look like and who you Absolutely. are at the moment, you know, and knowing that no one's going to disrespect that or look at you in a way they shouldn't look at you. Absolutely. And that's, I think that's also part of like a sense of like maturity in yep. the people yeah. around you and in yourself and just being an adult who <laughs> just yeah. wants to have an hour to themselves to work out. Absolutely. Like, I think that's, and it needs to be normalized, you know? It's so funny because I can walk into a CrossFit gym in an outfit like that and be 100% confident, feel respected, treated well by yeah. men and women. Yes. Women do not, we don't speak down nope. to each other. There are no negative thoughts about each other. It's like, you're you. Yep. I love you for you. Yep. I respect you for you because I've seen what kind of hard work you put in yep. for an hour every yep. single day here. As soon as you walk outside of the doors of your CrossFit gym, the rest of the world is judging oh you. Oh, my goodness. So it's like <laughs> CrossFit to me is my safe haven. Yeah. This is the place where I can come and be respected. I can yeah. come and be bad at something. I can come and get better at something. And I'm pushing myself mentally, physically, yeah. emotionally. Yeah. And everybody that's laying right next to me is doing it exactly the same. Yeah. yeah. Right? I don't care if you've never been an athlete before or if you've been the best athlete in the world. If you walk into a CrossFit gym, you know you're going to be respected. Yeah. The level, the playing field is leveled. Absolutely. Everyone is here. Yeah. You know? And it's, that's been the, I would say, owning a CrossFit gym, that has been the best thing about it is I can come in on a Saturday and have a handful of women, a handful of men all working out right next to them, to each other. And my ladies of all sizes are literally wearing a sports bra yeah. and pants and they're laughing, they're giggling, they're high-fiving, they're putting in some hard work 
the guys, they're doing their thing. Girls are doing their thing. They're doing it together as a team. And then at the end, everybody's hanging out, feeling super comfortable, loving who they are, and they're proud of themselves for what they've accomplished. Yep. That's what it's about. If, if we yep. can just push that outside the door somehow. Yeah. It'll be probably like 100 plus years before yeah. that ever happens. <laughs> but like you cannot let that mentality die yeah. in the gyms across the country. The CrossFit gyms. Like, we have created a safe haven for people. And when when I have women come in for no sweat intros, which is how we get you started on your journey here, I they usually start by looking at me. They look at my muscles. They look at what I'm wearing. And they're like, I'm, I'm afraid of you. Yeah. Or they say like, uh, is it okay to wear that here? Can I, can I do that? Yeah. That literally happens. And they're so scared yeah. and like withdrawn and yeah. like super insecure yeah. and have no self confidence. And I'm just sitting here and I'm like, you give me four weeks. Yep. You're going to come in here and you're going to be super open you're going to be confident in who you are and you're going to have so many friends because you all respect each other. Yeah. Just wait. I just sit here with a smile on my face because I'm like, you don't even know. <laughs> you don't even know. So I know who you're going to be. I know who you are, but you just have to find that. Yeah. So what about the flip side? So I know I have experienced this and I'm pretty sure you have too. What about women who come in and are like, I don't want to, I don't want to be bulky. Yeah. Or, or like I don't want to. I don't want to look like you. Yeah. Like, well, doing yeah. what you do. Yeah. Make me look like you. Absolutely. Very good point to bring <laughs> up. Very good point. So, um, that's a very good point. A couple things about that. Um, first of all, like I said, ten years. Right. Let's just put that into perspective. You come in, having maybe worked out for a few months. Like, yeah. give yourself ten years. Yep. In 10 years, your goals are gonna change. Yep. So you're gonna want to look different and be different because you're gonna be an athlete, right? Yeah. So right now, you might just wanna be thin, you might wanna look like the girls that you follow on Instagram, whatever, um, but I guarantee you by doing what I do, you're not gonna look like me immediately <laughs> at all, or like Tony. And so like Tony and I train very differently. Um, <laughs> we both do CrossFit, but we train different. So we eat different too. Mm -hmm. So eating is like 80% of it, Yeah. right? If yeah. you don't have your nutrition right, you'll never look like me to begin with, uh, or you'll never even look any different than the way you look now. Yeah. <laughs> so if you don't change your eating, nothing's gonna change yeah. ever, no matter what. I don't care how much you exercise, it's just not gonna work. Yeah. Um, that's another story. <laughs> but the way that we train is different. The girls that you see, like I said, on from the CrossFit Games, yeah. That is their job. <laughs> That's all they do all day is they train and eat, right? And they eat more than men eat to get Eas there. Easily. <laughs> so, like, yeah. it you literally has to be your full-time job yeah. to look like that, right? If you're doing one hour of exercise a day and that's it, and you maybe clean up your diet, you will not bulk up. I promise to yeah. God you will never bulk up. Like... <laughs> You'll experience some fat loss. You'll experience fat loss. Yeah, your, your body fat percentage will go down. Your yeah. body composition will look better. Yeah. But but if your goal is to, if you come in like and you're skinny fat like I was, and your goal is to gain weight and put on muscle, then you need to eat. <laughs> you need to eat a lot of food. Yeah. Right? Not only that, but when you come in, you need to establish a foundation your first year. It will take you one year to build a foundation to where your body is ready to handle heavy loads. Yeah. Right? It's not where you sit on a machine and you crank up the weight and then you just use your big muscles and your big muscles only to lift that weight. When you come to CrossFit, you're training your small muscle groups. Yeah. We're creating healthy tissue to be able to support your big muscles so that you don't get injured. Right? So your first year of CrossFit is simply going to be building that foundation. 
okay? The next year, that's when it's time to lift some heavy shit. Yeah. <laughs> so the only way you get bulky, if that's your goal, is to lift heavy weights Every at day. high intensity, right? Yep. Eat a ton of yep. food, recover, rest, right? Repeat. <laughs> and repeat. Yeah. Yep. Consistently. Yep. So Tony over here, her goals are different than mine. Mm -hmm. So Tony, tell us what your goals are and what you do to get there. Yeah, so I just want to be more competitive of a CrossFit athlete. I'm relatively newer to the sport, so I don't have, like Noel, I don't have 10 years face that she does. Um, you know, I have two years of consistency at best. And so um, I train five days a week. Um, a lot of times there's two sessions or even sometimes three sessions um, a day for, I'm working out anywhere from two to four hours a day and so yeah I'm trying to be more competitive in CrossFit I want to eventually compete um in competitions that are going toward the games like I'm yeah in a few years I, that's my end goal um and so my training has to reflect that my eating has to reflect that so when I'm not at work right I'm in the gym all day when I'm not working out I'm eating when I'm not eating I'm sleeping <laughs> and when I'm not doing that it's one or the other. Like, it's just yeah. repeat. Like, that's my, that's my life right now. Are you following any certain diet? Not necessarily. I know roughly about um, the amount of carbs and protein and fats that I need to hit, as well as, like, what that looks like in a day for me. Um, so I roughly try to hit that. And I also go off of how I feel. Like, last week, I was dragging. And my muscles weren't sore. Like, my... Physically, I felt good, but mentally, I was a little foggy, so I increased my carbs. Started cool. eating more fruit, eating more carbs, and I feel great this week. So, it's also kind of being intuitive with it as well. Yeah, and I would say that you're, like, I train an hour a day. That's it. Like, my goals are just to be healthy, Yeah. right? I would love to be thicker, have more muscle, be a little more bulky, right? Because I've been skinny my whole life, right? I was skinny fat. And so, like, my body fat is finally where I want it to be. But now my goal is to be more efficient mm -hmm. at movements, uh, to be more athletic, and to just be a little bit thicker. But I know what that takes, and that takes eating more, which I don't, right? It's hard enough for me to hit my calorie goals as it is. But in order for me to get bigger, I have to eat way more yeah. food like way more food and I just cannot do that I mean I can but I don't want to <laughs> it just comes down yeah. to how much energy do I want to put yeah. in eating I'm already a slow eater it already takes me like 30 Forever minutes to an to hour eat. <laughs> to eat one small meal so the, uh, the thought of eating more food just is more time right yeah, so yeah, yeah. like you you cannot get bulky you can't and don't confuse bulky with being fat yeah right you can easily get uh, mm -hmm. calories from other sources yep. that are not clean that will make you fat yeah right my when I say it takes me a long time to eat I'm eating nothing but clean food mm -hmm. right the only sugar I have is maybe a few dark chocolate chips every other day or every like two days a week I do not eat sugar right so like the majority of my diet yep. is clean the majority of Tony's diet is clean we're eating whole foods clean foods yeah. and lots of it <laughs> we're conscientious of our calorie intake yeah. right you don't get to where you want to get by just yep. eating whatever i'm gonna eat whatever and hopefully things fall into place i had a great workout today let me go get a cheeseburger and a milkshake nope i earned that <laughs> so about that <laughs> Oh, we're getting off topic. Sorry. But the, I'm sorry. The point is, that's another that's another talk. Females in the fitness industry. Yes. So um, I just say, like, the biggest thing is find a place where you're going to be respected mm -hmm. and where you can feel your best. Yeah. And nobody's going to tell you any different and where you can actually and truly believe that the work that you're putting in is what you're made of. You are not what the media tells you you are. Mm -hmm. 
right? Everything starts with the mind. So yeah. if there's something that you want to achieve, action precedes motivation. Yep. Right? So if you want to be a fit person, what is the action you have to take? Make it very small, easy, achievable. What do you have to do? It's not even work out. Literally, if you want to be a fit person, what proceeds being fit? You have to go to the gym. What proceeds going to the gym? You have to put on your workout clothes. Mm -hmm. Start there. Yeah. Put on your clothes, right? Yeah. So if you're like, I'm gonna go to the gym first thing in the morning, well then sleep in your workout clothes. So the second you wake up and you hear your alarm, yep. well, you're already dressed, so you might as well go to the gym, right? I've done that before. <laughs> yeah, go buy yourself some new workout yeah. clothes, have a reason to go, get dressed, get in the car and go. Yep. If yoga is your thing, if kickboxing is your thing, if cycling is your thing, and that's the place where you feel confident and happy and like you're accomplishing something and you're proud of yourself, then do your yep. thing. I'm not over here saying do CrossFit because that's the answer. Do whatever makes you happy. As long as when you go there, you feel respected and you feel like you're accomplishing your goals. That's all that matters. Yeah. That's all that matters. Right? If you want to try CrossFit, we're here. <laughs> but yep. do anything that makes you happy where you feel respected and where you're treated well. Right? And if you can do that for yourself, then you're better than all of us. <laughs> Yep. But it helps to have people that surround yeah. you who support you. Yeah. So that's a good place to start. Yeah. Cool. Any final thoughts? It's awesome being a woman in the fitness industry. <laughs> I Don't be discouraged by it. Finding CrossFit was the best thing that ever happened to me. Otherwise, the pressures of society would have gotten to me. Yeah. And I feel like I would be in a much, much different place in my life had I not found it. Yeah. I'd probably be super depressed right now and probably hate my body and have never achieved what I've achieved so far yeah. had I not found it. Yeah. So probably would be on beta blockers for my heart condition and live in a pretty shitty life at 28. Yep. A lot of people start here, which don't be afraid to start, right? Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah. Put a smile on. Don't let the day or social media ruin your mindset. Just do what's best for you. Find a place where you can feel confident. Yeah. Find a place where people are going to give you a high five, smile back at you, congratulate you for your accomplishments because yeah. what you just did was hard as shit. <laughs> right? Yeah. Cool. Thanks for listening. That was our first vlog. Hopefully Ooh. we'll do some more.